So um, naturalism slash humanism, they aren't exactly the same thing, but generally uh, they are atheistic. Um, and we see here that there is no God. Uh, the, the point is self-image, wealth, status, popularity. They believe in a revolution. Science rules. Uh, there is no hope. At least there is no hope beyond this life. Um, and man is the center of all truth. And I talked to you about kind of naturalism is the belief that only the natural world exists. Humanism believes that we as human beings can perfect not only ourselves, but perfect our world, our uh, cultures. Um, even though it's never happened, uh, that's, that's the belief um, that they have. Um, and then... Um, we talked about uh, this as well. Man, not God, is the center of all things. Uh, no God means no moral absolutes. There's uh, no prescribed way that you have to live. The material world is studied through science as man's source for understanding and salvation. Uh, the man is believed to be inherently good, therefore utopia is possible. We can perfect ourselves. Nobody ever has but it is, it is possible that we can uh, perfect our, ourselves. Uh, and one's value system is based on one's needs. Um, actualized human uh, potential is key to, the key to pro progress. This whole idea of self-actualization, of improving ourselves and, in, and uh, perfecting ourselves is very much part of uh, humanism um, in, uh, in particular. Um, and, and, uh, what, so, uh, so humanists are not bound by the accepted answers to the real questions of life. They are free to discover their own answers, uh, no matter what they are. Knowledge is based on reason and proof, not on faith in Christ. Is there a problem, is, is there something wrong with reason? No. Is there something wrong with proof? And in some sense, we could characterize your entire Bible class last year as finding out things through reason and proof, correct? We didn't even pick up the Bible until the second semester. We proved the existence of the universe through reason and proof. That's, that's good. The reason is good. It's a God-given thing. Proof is good. Um, it's just leaving God out of that um, is, is not, uh, not good. You're never going to get to the right answer if you leave out one, one of the right answers, right? So, um, so it emphasizes bringing out the best of people through scientific inquiry. Uh, individual freedom, human reason, tolerance, and self-determination. Um, uh, normative standards for moral behavior are discovered and tested by their consequences. So if it has a good consequence, it's good. If it has a bad consequence, it's bad. There's nothing that's inherently wrong, um, <coughs> necessarily, except for maybe being a Christian. Um, so we're going to talk about how um, how the naturalist, how the humanist would answer the five life questions. I'm going to show you a, a video in the middle of that. So God is outside of the picture. There is no God, and, um, and um, their lives are ordered in whatever way they want them to be ordered. Uh, in the Christian worldview, um, we have God at the center of that worldview, uh, and God uh, orders um, our lives. <laughs> really high quality <laughs> it's impressive. It'd be more impressive. If I and so, because of that, there's no, there's no, no. You're, you're right now making larger. Thank you. 
Um, so we have hope. Uh, so the five um, from <coughs> the five life questions: from Where do we come? Where where a random um, accident? Um, the universe exploded out of nothing, or something infinitesimally small, um, and uh, random, impersonal, undirected forces of nature came together to create all of this. Uh, but as we talked about last year, have you ever seen something that came about this way, randomly, impersonally, and by undirect forces? Did, have you ever seen anything that, that that is true of that is order? No, we're talking like about a train wreck. And, and the train wreck comes out with a brand new train that works perfectly. And that never happens. That's, that's random. And, and even atheists would say, yeah, but the universe does seem pretty random. Um, but that's not what happens when something is, is random. Um, and then why is there such a mess in the world? Um, so man is inherently good. It's just some people have not fully actualized to their human potential. If we could just get everybody completely actualized, then everything would be fine. Um, so it's our fault as Christians because we're not fully actualized. Yeah. Even though nobody ever has except Jesus, right? But it's possible. It's possible. No, but I mean, like, yeah. Yeah, but we're all, um, uh, disconnected in some I mean, that we all, uh, hold to things that we don't, um, that, well, not fully know that, that we don't actually know. Yeah, so we'll say, I believe this, but there won't, we won't act out of that. We'll act. Oh. Yes, Roe. That, like, for them to say that everyone needs to self actualize, that everyone needs to become morally right, and we say the Christian. We're the ones that are trying our minds to do it. And they're the ones saying that morality is whatever I think. For them to say that they're human and say, well, Christians aren't fulfilling my theology of life. We're the ones trying to do this. We're the ones trying to be good people, even if we aren't the people who aren't trying. Yeah, you know that stereotype of Christians like strong arming people and being mean to people and whatever? This is this is the atheistic If y'all just would get on board with us, everything would be fine. Um, and that's the, the atheistic thing. What were you saying, Oh, I was just saying that like um it's not that they're necessarily saying well like we're on the pursuit of perfection and right. And, and we're trying to be good and nice people so that people don't believe. Um, but I don't think that it's necessarily like correct to say that, oh, like we're the ones trying to be the nice people and you guys aren't actually doing that. Whenever uh, they don't know that they're not on the pursuit of perfection, yeah. they're on the pursuit of what they think is good, what they think is right, but they don't know truth. That's right. what I was thinking. Yeah. If we're the ones pursuing after morality, then there is a And there, I mean, I've, I've known a number of atheists, and, and it's not that they're nasty people. Right? Yeah. Um, some, some are. Yeah. <laughs> Especially the ones that are in charge. But, uh, but not everyone is. Yeah. I think the difference between Buddhism and like Christianity or Judaism is that we both are striving for perfection, but we're going to get to heaven when we get there. Yeah. And I would, I would, I would change that a little bit. I wouldn't say striving. I would say striving for 
or striving to become more like Jesus. But perfectionism, and this, this is coming from my older sister, who's a firstborn. She is a quintessential firstborn, and it's taken a lot of therapy to help her with that. And she doesn't mind that this is going out. She, she'd be like, you go, girl. Tell them my story. Um, and she, she says that perfectionism is not a gift. It is a curse. Um, and I'm so glad I was second born. It's not right. It's not perfect. I don't care. I want it to be perfect. It's all good. Uh, so, um, yeah. So that's why there's such a mess in the world. But also, um, that atheists would say religion is part of that. The part of the mess of the world is religion. And, and there has been a lot of evil perpetrated in our world in the name of religion. And, and even in Christian, claiming Christian religion, certainly 9-11, right? So, so, uh, so religion gets this rap of being part of the problem, not the solution. And here's where the song is. Now, don't let me forget to put this back on. Okay, what is the message of that song? What is it, Lauren? I say it's like the idea of, I would just work like animals. Like, not like the barbaric sense, but in the sense of, well, maybe in a barbaric sense, but also like just, oh, if we don't have any of these, we have no soul. In the sense, just live like animals. What do you think, Abby? Um, I think you're sort of saying that, like, oh, like if imagine like if there wasn't a religion or if there wasn't a God, then there wouldn't necessarily be any greater meaning, and so you sort of just be able to live now, and there'd be no reason to to fight over anything because it doesn't really all matter in the end. Okay. Does it work that way? No. No. Yes. I think what he's saying is like the main reason why this concept in the world is because it's motivation form, like uh, power, money, love. And if we just remove all of those, then we wouldn't have any concepts in the world. Therefore, okay. So, what is the problem with all of that? Yes. I think he's like this is how I do. Like, so like going back to the seminary, like a motivation for it, like the motivation itself, like certain things, like God, money, love, they're not bad. It's just how we like put into our motivation. Like Paul is like he's thinking that, oh, because we've done this for this, that the motivation wouldn't be bad. But it still wouldn't work if we did that. So what's the problem? Yes. If the world is like this, then life essentially has no value, and everything that we do in life has no purpose. No matter what, when we die, there's no point in it. No, no ultimate purpose, right? Mm -hmm. You just live and you live and die, and nothing comes of it. Exactly. Yes. Me again? Yes, you're sweet. Um, now we're the philosopher. So, <coughs> oh, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. <laughs> Okay, so in that making a paradise. Um, if we do that, he's not invited. Um, Look who's claiming to be Christ. I'm not. I'm saying oh, okay. if, we, if we follow what he's saying, I'm not inviting him. Uh, it, if it was like, a, if there actually is no God, then maybe, maybe that idea could work. But we know there is. We prove that to be true. But even if everyone gets along on this earth and everything, if we don't believe in God, then we're still all the world. Amy. I think it's easy to look at the world and Feels like nowadays, the amount of like intellect that people have commonly is very small. Like they take these concepts and I don't understand. 
bigger picture, right? Like you could be, everybody would be peaceful, but it would need to be like the same kind of peace a bug has one day or nine. Yes, it's peaceful. You don't have any conflict. You don't hope for war either. Okay, so I'll get to both of you. Uh, this is good discussion. Um, I know I've already said this today, but I think it was in the last class. I'm pretty sure it was the last class. So I, I, I talked about Brennan Council already. Yeah, pretty good. So Brennan Council was actually a Omaha Council woman, um, and an African American woman, a very wise woman, and she came to our church once. Said this, and this is a long time ago, like 20 years ago. I remember it so well. She said, For those who live in hopelessness, consequences mean nothing. Do you see that in our culture? For those who live in hopelessness, consequences mean nothing. I was going to say, I was going to say that maybe you do need to call a translation. Conflict does work, but it can only happen in a community. They can hear all the different people and we have it here. And I don't know what John Lennon would say. I think he's a very good human being. He's an artist, he's not a philosopher. Um, but it, it just can't happen. We can't take, we can't have both living in peace if we are fully overcome all the problems we see. We're still going to suffer. There's just no real way to fix it. We can't reach perfection on our own. If nothing else, the song shows while we need God as we need to be in I mean, obviously, like you said, God has many of our things that we can handle versus if we really just need to be in the world, that like we're looking at all these problems in our world and like we need to be in the world and like we need to be in the world and like we need to be in the world and like we need to be in the world and like we need to be in the world and like we need to be in the world and like we need to be in the world and like we need to be in the world and like we need to be in the world and like yeah. Here's here's the thing. Um, he's saying, like, did you did you notice that line? Imagine no possessions. Right? So it, and and the Beatles were believed in communism. Right? So so if we all hold things in common, if we all share, if we all you know, it's going to be perfect. That is not what history is. The most brutal societies, especially in the 20th century, also in the 21st and before, were, were the godless societies. If you, if you look at Soviet Russia, North Korea, China, you have repression at a level that is Pol Pot. Uh, I mean, just, just the repression and... and um, I want a stronger word than this, but mistreatment of people. Um, there's no freedom, um, and and it's and it's a godless society. Um, people would have to like they find out if there's like bread at a, a store, and they'd have to wait in line, uh, and and then the bread would be out, and they wouldn't have bread. Um, so think about the things that, that Mrs. Schrock is told us about Cuba, and and they're starving. The wealthy people have everything they want and more, but the common people have nothing. And um, and the, the when when the, the people in, from the communist countries uh, come over to the United States, you know what is the hardest thing to <coughs> adjust to? <coughs> Choice. They didn't even have to. Had to because there was only one kind of choice. Um, it, it's 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 unfathomable to them that we have this much. They don't they don't have it, and they don't have freedom. Um, and uh, so to say that we need to go to some sort of socialist system because of our sin, it always breaks. It always. Breaks. But that's utopia to, to, to John. Um, I thought it was interesting that you brought up that uh, communist societies, like that's where we find the 
Yes, because actually I can use the uh, so that I'm like, oh, the double song that I'm going to be portraying. Um, that is kind of common this uh, that I'll look off that you have whenever there is hopelessness. Um, oh, like, we don't have anything, it's just so much more simple and it's nothing is a quality. Um, because communist societies are never like the first choice, like, that's not how I thought. By a government that wants to be communist, it's always the result of um, another government failing, and I kind of think that is the, the hopelessness idea like your government broke and hope and hopelessness, and then thank you, communism. Um, yeah, and, and everyone, every human being that's ever lived on this planet, every human being living now, every human being that will ever live on this planet. There's nobody that says that you are not loved. We all yearn to be free. I believe that comes from the heart of a God who desires to set us free from our sin. And uh, so this isn't due to in any sense. Yes? I feel like uh, John Lennon's song is. And then when Susan came back to her, I wanted to do not thinking very deeply about it. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. You're right about that. Um, we're going um, we're gonna to stop there. Um, and uh, we'll, it, it, we won't do very much tomorrow because there's just a couple of things uh, that we'll do on, well, we will do other things, but we have just a very little bit more of, of naturalism and then we'll move on to postmodernism, which is really cute. I can, it'll make the brain smoke a little bit though. Uh, that's her brain. Sorry, I thought they were all in.